Jack, I got another explainer for you. All right. I just figured it's something that people think they know about, but you really don't. Okay. And so I just thought I would sort of bring it up. And it has to do with tire pressure. Tire pressure. Tire pressure. Yeah. Tire. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Are you, okay. Are you, are you ready? I'm, I'm really pressure? not ready. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, I'm, I, you know, where, hey, listen, <laughs> I feel like this. At this point, you know, uh, we done paddled out. It's time to ride the wave. That's the way I feel. <laughs> We're out there. Just We're, let's do it. That, you bring it on. Here, you bring you it say on. say tire pressure. I'm like, it's, you oh, got to be zen enough to go ahead and jump up. It's time to get up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and surf this wave, that's all. All right, let's do it. So tire pressure. First of all, if you have a tire with, quote, no air in it, of course there's air in it because there's the atmospheric air is in it. Right. Okay? Yeah. And atmosphere has its own pressure. And this is the weight of a column of air from mm -hmm. Earth's surface all the way up to the edge of the atmosphere. And if you had a found, found a way to weigh this, we, I think we might have talked about this in another explainer. But if you... If you have like one square inch or one square anything, but one square inch and have weigh that column of air, it will weigh 14.7 pounds. Nice. Okay. And the way air works, fluids work, is that pressure, I would say, yes, it's sitting on the scale, but that pressure manifests in every direction because mm -hmm. the molecules are vibrating in every direction. Right. So, so right now I have 14... 0.7 pounds per square inch on one side of my hand and on the on other the side above, above and, below and, and so everything's all equal in out every and, direction so i don't even notice it why like you're not getting crushed by your 14 pound correct air. just ever doesn't make a difference correct it's pushing and, down on you and pushing up and pushing up it's even steven <laughs> whereas if i have a suction cup right and i press out the air mm -hmm. that would otherwise be balancing it I press it out. Yeah. So now I say lift up the suction cup. You well, say, I can't. It's sucking me down. No, it's not. Why can't you pick up the suction? 7 pounds per square inch per square pressing inch down is on. pushing it down. It's pushing it. It's really not sucking anything. Uh, yes. Uh, suction cups don't suck. They don't they suck. <laughs> We, they got a bad rap for so long. Yeah, they don't suck. They don't okay. suck. <laughs> so if you had 10 square inches of area on, this, on the suction cup, right. I can ask you how much force would it take to pull the suction cup off the surface? So I got to go 10 square inches times 14.7 pounds per, and yeah. then push back in that opposite direction, and pop. Okay, that gets you 147 pounds. So if you can pull 147 pounds or more, it you pops right it off. Or, or you could cheat and pop open a little uh, curl in the edge. And, and then let and the, nature do it for you. Air slips in and then it just comes off. Right. So you, that you, you let nature help you out. Okay, so the point is, if you fill a tire mm -hmm. to what we call 10 pounds per square inch, mm -hmm. that's 10 pounds on top of the air pressure that's already in there. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right. All right, so first of all, just lay that out. Cool. All right, so now... Have you noticed, or perhaps not, that on bicycle tires, mm -hmm. the thinner, the skinnier the tube, yes, the what? The less air you should keep putting in it once it gets hard, because it will pop. I'm telling okay. you. Okay, but from experience, okay. No. <laughs> okay, if you look at the ratings of thin tires, in essentially every case, depending on what they're made of, but the, the, in every case, they have a higher pounds per square inch rating than the bigger tires. Okay? Higher. Okay. Period. I, don't, I didn't know that, to be honest. Yes, yes. Okay, I, so I, now this is This is the first I'm ever hearing of this. Okay, because you never you got to pay attention. Well, okay? no, I'm going to tell you why. Because I come from the times when you would fill your tire... And then you just push down on it. And if you can actually push it and flatten it, you're like, now put some more air in there. Okay. Oh, that was how you measured? Yeah. <laughs> That's how you measured. And then once you couldn't do that, you'd be like, all right, it's time to go. It's time. Yeah, yeah. You want to use a gauge, okay? Right, exactly. Yeah, all right. right. All yeah. right. So, and the gauge is calibrated to not count air pressure. All right? right. So that's how they work. All right. So now watch. You sitting on your bicycle, and the bicycle has tires and the tires are in contact with the road, 
obviously the heavier you heavier you are, the flatter the tire is going to look. True. Okay, we we that, okay, you know this. Well, yeah. Why does the tire flatten if you're heavier? Why why does it do that? I'm going to tell you why. Because at all times, uh-huh. the pressure inside the tire mm-hmm. per square inch times the square inches of tire in contact with the road has to equal your weight plus the weight of the bicycle. Wow. At all times. At all times. Okay. <sighs> okay. So. Okay. So. All right. So. If I have a big tire, like a kid's tire, okay? Mm-hmm. If I have one of those kind of tires, and it's huge, it might take 30 pounds per square inch. That's not uncommon, okay? 30, 20 to 30 pounds per square inch. And there's a square inch of it in contact in the back and a square inch in contact with the front. Add those up, it is holding up 60 pounds. That could be the weight of the bicycle plus the weight of the kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, you put a heavy kit on there, the, 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 the bicycle has to hold up more weight against the air pressure in the tires. So the, the tires flatten a little more, adding more surface area. Right. Okay? Adding more area. So that now you go, go the air pressure times the, the, the square inches in touch with the ground, mm-hmm. and now that'll equal the weight of the heavier kit. Okay, so I, I'm heavy, all right? I'm 260 pounds right now, okay? Okay. All right. So now, I ride a bicycle with very narrow tires. The air pressure in those tires is 130 pounds per square inch. 130 pounds, okay? Per tire. So watch what happens. I I deflate it to that amount, and those tires will flatten to slightly more than a square inch per tire. Because it's my weight plus the weight of the 22-pound bicycle. It's got to hold up 280 pounds. Right. So it's going to flatten slightly more than a square inch on each. And that is my, that is my tire. Okay? Okay. So, so, farm tractors have huge tires. Right. Huge tires. In that way, they put relatively low air pressure in them. That way, when the tires roll over the crops, ah, it does minimal damage. Right, because you're not digging in. You're not digging you in. You don't it need that. It spreads out That's the pressure. Brilliant. Okay? You can still hold up the tractor. Right. If you, if you get enough area coming down. Otherwise, you'd be leaving deep tracks in the road, and you can't have that. Not in your phone. Oh, it's like dune buggies. They all have big, giant, wide, like, balloon tires. Well, that one is to increase traction on sand. Yeah, okay? but they don't dig into the sand is what they, I'm saying. They, they, don't... they don't dig into the sand. Correct. And so, so tire pressure is all about how much weight are you holding up. And they will tell you in your car, if you're going to carry a heavy load, increase the air pressure in your tires so that your tires don't flatten out. Right. Okay. If you increase the pressure from, let's say, uh, you know, 35 pounds to 45 pounds per square inch, that gets you extra support in all of your tires. In a typical car, you know, how wide is a, is a tire? You know, it might be a foot, well, you know, 20, nine inches. 18 inches is a typical tire. No, no, not across? Yeah. What are you, 18s. What are you riding the Indy 500? What? <laughs> 18 inches? Yeah. You, yeah, okay. All right, I'll give it to you. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're both city people, so I don't, you know. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I drive an SUV, though. So they're 18s. Oh, they're okay, fine. 18s. Fine, fine, it's fine. SUV. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, you, you said car, and I'm, oh, I'm really me, not thinking Mr. car. Mr. SUV. Okay. Yeah. Fine. I think yeah. so. A car might be. And that. it's not electric, and I'm, I'm very ashamed, but I'm buying an electric car. So I know you already have one, but so I'm, eventually I'm late right. to the game. So but, here's what yeah. you do you can do this experiment at home. Please. Go look at how much of your tire is touching the ground. Measure that, okay, Mm -hmm. front to back and then across the width. So you'll get two measurements. It might be like five inches uh, front to back, flattening on the ground, Mm -hmm. and then measure the the width of the tire. Multiply those numbers by each other. That's the square inches per tire. Multiply that by four, and that's going to give you the weight of your car. 
Get out of here. Yes. That's pretty wild. I mean, yes. that makes sense just from what you just said. Correct. Uh, there's only one problem. What's that? I do not give a damn how much my car weighs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you care? <laughs> Chuck, do it for science. Oh, okay. I will do it for science. <laughs> you should get somewhere between, you're an SUV, somewhere between 1,500 pounds and a ton, 2,000, oh, something okay. like that. That makes sense. And, but all just by measuring the square inches. So, oh, oh, sorry. You have to know what your tire pressure is first. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's on and the then sidewall. get your That's square inch. It's in the sidewall, or or maybe if you're a modern car, it tells you on the yeah. On they the, can tell you on the dashboard. On the dashboard, and so you got four tires and get the area. So it's front to back in contact, and then the width. Multiply those two numbers, then multiply by four. There you and multiply that, by your. Air pressure. That's the and way to your that's car. That's the way to your car. And so right. you, it's a it's a way to weigh your car without going to a scale. That's pretty cool. Your, your tires are doing it all by themselves. And now uh, all I need to do is figure out the calculation to um, put uh, Aunt Gail and Uncle Daryl in the back seat. Um, that, that's a different calculation. So it'll either flatten the tires some oh, more. Oh, believe me, it's going <laughs> to flatten the tires, brother. <laughs> Let Which will do. So then the car has given itself a way to hold them up. Or right. you increase the air pressure so that at the same area in contact with the ground, it holds them up. That's what okay? That's sweet. And generally, they tell you to increase the air pressure because right. it's better for gas mileage and things. Right on. Yeah. yeah. All right. You I got it, it, dude. That's cool. But there's math in everything in it the world. It really is. I got to tell you, I... I was worried when you said tire pressure. Okay. I, I really was. Worried. I was worried, man. <laughs> so just, just a quick one. A quick one. doesn't belong in this explainer at all, but while we're here, do, do you know your hat size? I don't. You don't? Okay. Um, I, I know it's small, though. It's okay. like seven. It's a seven or six. That wouldn't be small. If it's seven, it wouldn't be small. That's okay, a, then it's a six and head. seven eighths or okay. some crap so, like right, that. Right. So here's what you do. measure. Get out a tape measure and measure the circumference of your head. In inches, okay, right where the brim would sit. All right, okay? write down that number and then divide it by pi. That's your hat size. Okay, I'm definitely going to do that. Now okay, that's, I'm, I can't <laughs> yeah. wait to get this over okay. with because that's a damn. That's the first thing I'm going to do as soon as we get <laughs> off this call. There's measurements so, and everything. Home, I swear home, to home yeah, utility. So in inches, where the brim will sit. Right, and um, divided by pi. Correct, and that's your hat size. It'll fit perfectly every time. That's that's pretty cool. There are two very good things I've learned right now. Uh, that's probably your hat size in America. I, elsewhere, I don't know how they do it. Well, but. don't worry, because I'm not buying a hat from any place but America. Okay? <laughs> Damn right. No way in hell. Make sure my American hat is made in China. That's right. And the way you're pulling off my hat says made in China. Mm -mm. You pull off my hat, and it'll say, make America hat again. That's what it'll say. Make America hat again. And boom. Damn right. <laughs> America, baby. What the hell? I'm, that's what I'm talking about. This is evidence it's time to end this explainer. <laughs> okay. This has been yet another Star Talk explainer. Chuck, thanks for being there. Always a pleasure. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.